back to Oscar Overlander. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to part two. I feel really productive today. Uh, I just finished up another little video about uh, question and answers regarding my gas struts. Um, yeah, this video will be also a Q&A but all about the subframe questions. So oh, maybe not all, but there is always reoccurring questions and those I will answer in this video. So first off, after we showed in the last video how we installed this box onto the chassis, um, if you re may remember the last video, uh, I had a question uh, about did we just put the box on the chassis and left it that way? So um, it was maybe, or I'm pretty sure it was just a pokey question because I didn't mention anything how we fastened it, you know, but of course we did fasten it. So let me show you that uh, closer. So just in general, the way we mounted this whole habitat onto the dry, uh, truck chassis is with 17 bolts. 17 bolts m14 so 14 millimeter diameter okay so let me show you the first nine the first nine are installed like this so what i've done is we have a bracket the lower bracket welded to the subframe and then i have added a other bracket like a c-shape bracket onto the habitat here you know, when we, when we fabricated basically those uh, trusses here, the bottom truss, the floor trusses, at the very beginning of the, um, the habitat build, I welded those uh, plates in there, like a spacer in here, in that regulate here, as you can see, right there, that plate. That has been added almost a year ago. So now I welded basically the extra added bracket onto that plate, fully welded all the way through, okay? So this bracket here, this, the, the upper one, acts like a basically, this is like a train track here with some spot stoppers on both sides. So on the other side of the habitat, is, or on the ha other side of the frame, it's the same thing. So it's like a rail, like this habitat can't go left or right. There's no way. And also it cannot lift up because of this 14 millimeter bolt. The bolt grade is 10.9. All the bolts I use, they are 10.9 grade. So that's a higher strength grade. That bracket exists on the habitat nine times. And because of the stair, I got a tough time to put it five times on. I have it four times on that side. And on the tank side, on the opposite side, is it five times mounted. That is that. Additional to that, we have here, as you can see here, M14 uh, 10.9 uh, bolts in there with a the fine thread. It's uh, uh, drilled and threaded into the habitat uh, bone structure. So that is bolted in there. And then additionally to that, I secured them. It's against the light. And you see it? Yes, now you can see it. It's welded. All of them, they are welded onto the arms. So they can't, they can't come back out. So they're, they're acting like pins in there. They are 40 millimeter long and they're acting like pins and I have that eight times. So 17 bolts in total holding this habitat on to the chassis. Now I have received a lot of questions below the video and also emails, people sending me emails and asking me about the springs because they're very concerned about using the right springs. And I like to clean up with a misconception, which is out there, you know, um, but it, here's the thing. I'm, I'm by no means, I'm an engineer, right? All I say is basically what I studied myself on the internet and other sources where I could, you know, find things about these, this topic. But the thing is, these springs, they're not so important as you may think that they are. Yeah. So the, the dampening effect on the habitat when it swings from left to right 
is not depending on these springs. It is completely and solely depending on the integrity of the subframe. And in this case, I'm talking only about the spring-loaded subframe, the type of frame I built. Not the uh, torsion-free frame, which has uh, joints in there, tilting joints and, and stuff like that. That's a completely different beast. Yeah, I'm talking about that uh, frame, which is on the rear end fastened and the free at the front. And it lifts because the truck beneath articulates, right? And these springs, they are not the only actor in case of dampening that, that force. They are only there that the rods, the restrictor rods, that they are not rattling. That's what it is. They might have a little effect on dampening because they are there, but this, the, 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 the whole habitat just laughs about that. The force you can load on the spring, like in a static, static situation means completely compressed together is 1,790 Newton. So let's say 1,800 Newton. With a point load of 180 kilogram, so 180 kilogram rested on top of the spring, this would push the spring completely together. 180 kilogram. So the habitat has a weight of two and a half, three ton. So 170 is absolute nothing. This is really a misconception out there, you know, like the springs, they are the most important or whatever. You honestly, you could actually take those springs out and drive completely without it. But what it does is your rods, your restrictor rods, which you really need because they say, hey, Habitat, you are stopping right here. If the max of the swing is, a, is, is reached, then these, these rods, they stop the Habitat from going further right? Until here and not further. They don't do that. They, like I said, they just prevent that the rods are rattling within the brackets. That's all it is. So, you know, you have in a pan a little spring in it. You could use this one if it is big enough to put it in there. Well, by the way, it's just a joke. Um, by the way, some people, they have rubber buffer in there, right? Not even springs. So this is the biggest misconception, you know, about these springs and the spring rates. Anyway, if somebody want to know, this one is 280 millimeter long. The diameter is 40 millimeter inside. And uh, the wire is 6.3 or 6.4 millimeter. And the force is 1,800 Newton. So this is what I thought need to be said about the springs. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure there is some engineers out there that are saying, oh, whoa, what is this guy saying? But it's my opinion, okay? So this is that. Um, very important, there's the restrictor rods, yeah, which you use later on to adjust, to restrict the, the angle of tilting on your habitat. That's where you actually adjust it. So I have it adjusted um, to a free play. So when, when, the, when the subframe lifts up from the chassis, <clears throat> this is the, the distance. I call this the free play. It cannot exceed 120 millimeter, absolute max. So And uh, when we did the uh, articulation test with the forklifts two, three videos ago, you can look it up right here. Um, then I saw it didn't lift more than 100 millimeters. So 120 is basically playing it safe. Okay. So now I will show you how I did it, you know, and how you adjust it. Okay. So this is the driver's side. Uh, on the opposite side, there is a stair and also the storage box is kind of tough to show. Um, <clears throat> here, I got a light in here. So now you can see at least the upper part from that spring at the front. So here is the front. I'm right in between the driving cap and the habitat. So there's the front of the subframe. And this is by far the highest point, or let's say the, the, where the biggest gap gets created. When the habitat tilts, the gap will be created between the subframe and the chassis, the driver, the, the vehicle chassis. 
The way I adjusted it is basically these rods, they have, you can see they have a nut at the top and they also have a nut at the bottom. You can't see it's behind the tank now, right? So, and the thread, the thread on the, on the upper end of the rod in the middle here is only an inch long and at the bottom is four inches long. So there I have the most adjusting length, but it can go up and down with the nut to restrict basically the lifting height, right? So this is adjusted to 120 millimeter max. Why 120 millimeter? Because it depends on that guide. I have left and right this guide here. It's a metal guide. It's a plate, it's a half inch, half inch thick plate bolted onto the, uh, to the chassis frame, you know? And um, the subframe can lift up but it should never ever lift higher than the guide is because then the potential is there that it rests on top of the guide and you know, like that will be a total disaster. So it, the, the, the subframe has to be at all times within the guides. So that's why this is, uh, you see the, the, uh, the subframe height is six inches, right? Which is 150 millimeter. So when I restricted that max by 120, so that the subframe never ever leaves the guide. Does it make sense? I hope it does. Okay, so now uh, I will show you on the other side. It's just very, very hot in the sun. Let me show you that I have basically on those springs, or oh, no, on those, on those rods at the bottom, I got a long thread, you see there, in the spring, is still threaded and it goes all the way down till there so that's a long long thread and at the top is only one inch see so that's that's how i adjusted it so this is it about the spring subframe topic i hope uh it was helpful i answered questions they they came up over time and uh, yeah, it's not rocket science. It's just mechanics and uh, not so much to it as many people think. So therefore, stay tuned and we we'll see us in the next one.